on Hawaiian punch Know you like all this gush I know you can't get enough Sip, sipping on Hawaiian punch, ayy Hey, my name is Adeline Warren and you're listening to Girl Talk I like to say that I'm the big sister of the internet. You can watch me fuck up all you want, but hey, maybe we can learn something from it. I hope you enjoy. Whoo, girl, I've been waiting for this one. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects that I could watch countless YouTube videos on. I could watch countless TED Talks on. I could talk to people about it for hours. It's my favorite thing to talk about in the whole entire world, and it's investing. And I feel like we don't have enough women in the investing world. Every YouTube video that I've ever watched has been a man talking about investing. Like, there's some girls on TikTok that I follow, but I feel like we're so lacking. The women are so lacking on the investment side of, like, YouTube and education and podcasts and everything like that. I fucking love talking about investing. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of controversial things. And I also wanted to put a little disclaimer at the beginning of the video. It's saying that I'm basically not a professional and everything that I say you should take with a grain of salt because I'm literally a 24 year old from Canada. Like I am not, I didn't, I didn't go to school for this. I didn't do anything with this. I just am fucking obsessed. And I like to watch lots of YouTube videos on it. I like to talk to my entrepreneur best friends about it. Like my friends with businesses about it. I love talking about investing. So I kind of, I wanted to make this kind of like investing for dummies kind of thing. This is things that I wish someone told me when I first started making money because when, because basically I did not grow up rich. I basically like I lived in an RV at one point, like me and my family did not grow up rich. And I feel like when you don't grow up rich, you, you kind of like are behind already and people who grow up rich already know all of these things like their parents are able to tell them all of these things and they're able to just like already be set up for success and it's the people that weren't born rich that we really have to study we really have to learn and we really have to grow and evolve and like become these huge brain entrepreneur mindset you know investing type people because nobody tells you these things and Everyone always, I feel like when I grew up or when I was younger, I used to be like, oh, um, investing is for rich people. Like, oh, like, I don't have to worry about that because I'm not rich. Blah, blah, blah. No, everybody can invest. You can invest working at McDonald's. You can invest being a little kid. You can invest like, in so, you can invest in being a sugar baby. Like you can invest in so many ways. And I'm going to talk to you about it. Like you don't have to be a finance bro to talk about investing. We're going to talk about so many things like, dude, investing in your beauty and in yourself is a complete investment. And we're going to talk about a lot of things. Birkins, like, you know how Kylie Jenner is always like, oh, Birkins are an investment. I'm going to tell you all the fucking shit. I'm going to spill all the tea because I look into this shit. And I, this is just my, also my personal opinion. Nothing that I say is fact or anything. It's just my personal opinion. And the number one um, advice, if you could take away anything from this podcast is I would say, don't listen to anybody's advice about investing. Okay. Do your own research. Don't listen to your friends. Don't listen to this person. Don't listen to this person because they, they always say don't listen to your friends with investing because a lot of the times your friends will convince you to invest in something because they're nervous about it and they want the stock to go up and blah, blah, blah. If their stock goes down, they're going to feel less shitty if your stock also goes down. Like it's it's a thing. Like people say don't ever listen to your friends about investing advice. This episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash girl talk or download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Again, that's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash girl talk. ZocDoc.com slash girl talk. But again, this is for beginners. So let's start out with the definition of investing because we always talk about what what actually is it. So the definition of investing is to expend money with the expectation of achieving a profit or material result by putting it into financial plans, shares or properties or by using it to develop a commercial venture that it basically is putting your money or putting your efforts or putting your time into something and expecting something bigger in return. Um, and sometimes it could be a gamble. Like we talk about, we're going to talk about some things that are like investing versus gambling. Um, and s I don't know, it, investing can even range from stocks, from real estate, from Birkins to shoes to collector's items. You can even invest by um, having the first ever MacBook Pro because you probably spent like X amount of money on it. Now it's probably worth a lot of money because it's rare and collectors probably want it. That's investing. Like it, it 
isn't as crazy and as um I don't know it's not as hard as people make it out to be like when I think of investing I think of like these stock bros like oh you have to go to school for it blah blah blah. it's really a lot more simple than that um and before I start again never never take investing advice from anyone and everything that I say I should take with a grain of salt don't sue me if you lose all your money okay this is just like from my personal experience and I just need to put that (laughs) that disclaimer out there before I get into anything and before I also get into anything when you invest, you should invest in things that you genuinely really like and things that you actually find fun. Um, because I feel like when I was investing in boring things that I wasn't really interested in and blah, 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 it never made me excited or never like really did well because I feel like in investing, you really have to be passionate about it. And you have to be excited about it. So don't invest in something because you think it's going to do well. Invest in something because you think it's fun and you think that it's cool and you want to make money. And a reason why investing is so important. I know I'm, I have such a long intro because I have so many fun facts about investing. It's like my favorite thing to talk about. Um, a fun fact is that the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So seven ways that they're making money. And the average American only has one, only one way of making money. And it's not like these huge CEOs and these huge like people have like seven jobs. No, the way that they're making money is by investing, by making money in their sleep, by putting their money into something and having it work for themselves. And that's called passive income. Instead of working for money, they basically have money work for them. And we're going to talk about that. And a reason why investing is so important, I put down, I thought that this was kind of interesting because I feel like all the girls, we I had an athlete phase where I was obsessed with athletes and I was like, I need to date an athlete. I need to date someone that makes a lot of money, blah, 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 blah. But did you know that 78% of athletes go broke only three years after they retire? Three years. These bitches go broke. What? And it's because they're really bad at investing their money. Just because they're making a million dollars a year, whatever it is at the time, it doesn't mean that they're going to be, you know, well off the rest of their life. And there's this one YouTube video, I forget what we were talking, what it was about, but it was talking about a janitor that ended up being a millionaire um, just by being really good and investing his money. You don't have to be making crazy amounts of money to invest in yourself and set yourself up for retirement and you know all of these things and oh another thing i wrote down i put 70 percent of lotto winners so people that win the lottery lose or spend all of their money go broke within five years and it's because they're not doing the work and it's because they most lottery winners don't grow up rich and these rich people don't tell us these hacks on how to stay rich so i'm your bestie bitch and i'm gonna fucking tell you all the life hacks and all of the rich person hacks because i had to learn all of this myself and i hope that people watching this video or people you know listening to this podcast are able to learn from it and we're able to be badass bitches because we 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 need more women in the investing space and we need more women talking about it because it's actually really fun it's not as hard as like these men make it out to be and it can be really fun so i put number one i put stocks and this is going to be the boring one i'm going to start with the boring one but there's different types of stocks that you can obviously invest in for beginners and for the absolutely easiest and best thing i put mutual funds so mutual funds basically lets you purchase a small piece of many different stocks so a lot of the top like 500 companies whether that's apple google um like i don't know if bath and body works in there i don't know all of the top companies are you basically having a teeny tiny stock in each and every single top company but yeah in in canada we call it mutual funds but in the us they call it s p 500 So that is the absolute easiest thing you could do. And a lot of the times it's a really good return. It's normally around like 7% growth. And then if you're a little bit more advanced, you could do um, another thing called individual stocks where you basically put your money towards an individual company, not like the, you know how they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's basically what mutual funds or S&P 500 is. And individual stocks means you have all of your eggs in one basket. (laughs) But people become really rich off of it and you have to really do the research. But I think for beginners, I would really recommend um, mutual funds and S&P 500. So those are the two basic ones that you can kind of invest in. And then I also put day trading. Day trading is a very intricate, crazy. You basically 
trade your money. It's essentially gambling. I was watching like money explained and they basically said that day trading is essentially gambling. I'm not a huge fan of that shit. I love just putting my money away in something and like just let it like grow or, it, you know, if you go to the bank, they'll basically explain to you like stocks go up and down and up and down and up and down. But at the end of the day, when you look at the graph, your money essentially just goes up 7%. So people always say if you, you know your stocks or your mutual funds, whatever it is, if it's low, don't take it out. Don't freak out. Don't get emotional because it will go back up. And if you take it out, then you're just going to lose your money. I hope that makes sense. Okay, number two, I put renting versus homeowner. So you know how everybody says, oh, you should like invest in a house. Like everybody should have a house. If you're rich, you should have a house, blah, 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 blah. Um, one book that I really do recommend if you're really into investing is Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's a really good book. It's like New York best time seller. Everybody loves it. Um, he basically says that your house is more so a liability as opposed to an asset. And what that means is an asset is like a cash flow into your pocket. So let's say that you have your house and you rent it out to multiple people. And, you know, you say you rent it out for $3,000. So that's $3,000 going into your pocket every single month. That's an asset. A liability is a cash flow out of your pocket. So a liability could be like you buy your house and you're just constantly putting money into it and your, your house is not making you money. You're putting money into it. And, you know, people are always like, oh, um, when you have a house, you're able to like have something at the end of the day, you're able to sell your house, it goes up in value. But you have to keep in mind that when you do have a house, you have to pay for insurance, you have to pay for upkeep, you have to pay for maintenance, you have to pay for property taxes. A lot of this adds up when you have a house. So that's why in this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he kind of explains that it's more of a liability as opposed to an asset and like kind of like an investment. But if you're really smart, like I have properties that I live in, but I also rent out. So I would consider that an asset. So every month I charge someone rent and they're, that just brings in money. And a lot of times the rent goes towards the mortgage, but at the end of the day, I'm not putting my own money into it. They're putting their money into my property and at the end of the day I'm going to be able to sell it whereas if I were to just live in it then I would be putting my own money into it and I'm not making any money off of it if that makes sense I don't know it's kind of hard to explain but that's what I took away I really love that book um rich dad poor dad oh <laughs> I kind of already touched on this but I put number three for investing I put real estate uh, we kind of already touched on this, but renting out a property. So like even the basement of your house, um, if you have a duplex, that is an asset. Um, and real estate is my personal favorite type of investment. It's like the thing that I could like literally get horny over. I love talking about real estate. Um, and it's so cool because you can rent out your property. You can Airbnb it. I've heard so many people make so much money on Airbnb. You can buy a fixer upper and fix it up and sell it for more. And real estate is really cool because um, on your main property that you live in, if your property goes up in value, you don't have to pay taxes on that. And if you're making a lot of money, say I think it's over like a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a year, you're gonna be spending a lot of your money on taxes because you're basically getting charged forty percent of your money, almost fifty percent of your money goes to the government unless you have a good lawyer, you're able to write things off. So that's really cool. And I love um, investing in real estate. Okay, number four, I was so proud of myself when I figured out this hack, Birkins. So you know when Kylie Jenner is always like, oh, eh, um, Birkins are the best investment, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my Birkin, oh, my Kelly, yo, goes up in value, better than gold, blah, 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 blah. That shit is fake unless you're super fucking rich and you have money to blow it is not really an investment and i'm gonna explain to you why basically when you get a birkin well the the way to get a birkin is you can't just walk into the store and buy one you have to play the birkin game and the way that you play the birkin game is you essentially have to spend the amount of money that the birkin costs which is around ten thousand dollars of random shit random Hermes blankets, random Hermes sandals, random Hermes um, clothes, things that you don't even probably want, all the horse shit, like, sorry, that's kind of, 
<laughs> Hermes has a lot of like, it's like a horse brand and they have like, you know, saddles and like riding boots and like helmets and stuff like that. And you essentially, it's not guaranteed, but you essentially have to spend around $10,000 worth of random shit that you might not even want to even be offered a $10,000 bag. So people are like, oh, I bought my bag for $10,000 and I sold it for 20. But girl, you already spent 20 on the bag to get the bag. So that's why I personally don't feel like Birkins or Kelly's are investments unless you're really lucky and you get like a super rare, super cool color that everybody wants. Like even like a mini Kelly, everybody loves those mini Kelly's. They sell them for like, I think $6,000 and they could be resold for up to 30,000, which is super rare. I think you have to be a pretty good client to even be offered that. Um, you're not, you're almost kind of like breaking even with your investment of the bag. Um, and I, I, was so frustrated when I figured this out because I was like, oh my God, this is so easy. I'm going to get a Birkin and I'm going to be able to wear it. And then in a couple of years, I'm going to be able to sell it for like almost like double the price, like blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, you're spending 10,000 to get a $10,000 bag and reselling it for 20. So at the end of the day, are you making money? No, but it's fun. And if you're really rich, then I guess it's kind of like an investment. But if you're actually looking at an investment piece, um, a Birkin isn't really technically i mean i guess i don't know not really an investment <laughs> um number five i put your appearance your appearance sadly enough shallowly enough can be an investment and what i mean by that is as women investing in your appearance is unfortunately important and pretty privilege is so a thing like we would we would be naive to say that pretty privilege isn't a thing like everybody talks about it on tiktok like it's sad but instead of having a pity party about like i hate society you can use it to your advantage so i don't know it's really sad but i feel like putting the effort into looking good, putting the effort into, you know, taking care of your skin, doing your makeup, doing your hair, having cute clothes, I think not only attracts like the type of partner that you want in your life, it attracts like business partners, it attracts like maybe even a raise, it attracts this, it attracts that. I don't know why it's really shallow, but it's just the way that the world is. And I personally feel like making yourself look good is an investment so that's why i don't know i love like doing my hair doing my makeup da, 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 da. i don't feel bad about spending the money on that shit because i love um making myself and my appearance look cool look good um to attract that kind of job or opportunity or person that i want to attract and it's really sad and it's really shallow that i'm saying this and it's really shallow of the world but let's I'm just being honest. I'm just like saying, you know, what the reality is. So spend that money on yourself, treat yourself, make yourself look good, make yourself look fine. Um, and I would even consider that an investment. Like invest in yourself and it doesn't even have to be shallow. I think also investing in yourself in ways that is on the inside like investing in books and i think that's an investment investing in wait this is another this is another tip but i'm kind of like fast forwarding to it but investing in books investing in courses investing in your own personal growth is also an investment as well as your outer appearance i think your outer appearance and your inner appearance is both investments um number six i put cars because I feel like in LA, especially, everyone always has these crazy flashy cars. And these girls are like, oh my God, he's so rich. Dude, cars are not a good investment at all. The second that you drive a brand new car off of the property, it almost goes down like half, almost goes down half, unless it's like a super crazy supercar that's super rare. A lot of the times it goes down in value. But if you're looking to put your money into something, whether it's a house, whether it's a rent, whether it's, you know, a car, whether it's this, whether it's that, I really don't think that cars are that great of an investment. Like, I think it's really cool to, you know, treat yourself and spend the money on a nice car. I love my cars. My cars are the greatest and I love driving around them. And I'm so glad that I treated myself. But is it going to go up in value? No. And like, have I accepted that? Yes. But I invest my money in other things. And I think, you know, it's like give or take. Okay, number seven, I put bags and shoes. 
it doesn't even have to be bags and shoes. It could even just be rare collector's items. And this is kind of like a gamble too, because obviously we can't predict the future and we don't know what's going to be rare, what people are going to be buying, what in the future is going to be popular. But um, they could be as random as a Chanel heart bag. I think those Chanel heart bags sold for under a thousand dollars, and now they're being resold on Fashion File for I think it's like ten thousand dollars. Let me look at this. Oh, I can't find it. But there are a lot of bags and a lot of shoes and a lot of rare collectors items that do go up in value. But is there a way to predict it? No. So is it kind of a gamble? Yes. But I think investing is like a little bit of gambling and a little bit of strategy and like knowing what you want to do. This episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. Wherever we go anywhere, we want to be comfortable, right? We want to feel safe and protected. And this can be especially true when we go to the doctor. Sometimes going to the doctor can make you feel worried or anxious, but that's not the case with ZocDoc because ZocDoc is all about finding the doctor that is right for you. They want to make your experiences as seamless as possible from start to finish. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. So the quality and care you need is just a few taps away on the ZocDoc app. When I first moved out of my parents' house, I always put off going to the doctor. I would never remember to make an appointment, but all the struggle is gone now that I use ZocDoc. The ZocDoc app makes it so easy to find local doctors that I can trust, and I love that they all have reviews so I know what I'm gonna get into before I even go. So when you're not feeling your best and trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. That's when you turn to ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash talk or download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Again, that's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash girl talk. ZocDoc dot com slash girl talk. But I wrote down some examples, some really random example. <laughs> Can be as random as like a Chanel heart bag. Um, oh, Rick and Morty bong. Um, a platform mini Uggs. Those bitches went up in value. Did you see that? Uggs, they sold it. I think it was like for $100. Now they're being resold for $300 on um, StockX. Um, some Nike shoes, even concert tickets. I hate scalpers though. Don't invest in concert tickets. Like just let people enjoy music. Like don't don't resell concert tickets. But you know what I mean? Like people buy the concert tickets and then they resell it for even more. You saw the Taylor Swift concert, how expensive free concert tickets were because of the scalpers. But that is technically a form of investing, even though you're breaking people's banks and you're breaking people's hearts. Don't do that. Don't buy tickets and then resell them. It makes people sad. Um, <laughs> but if you know that something is going to sell out and there's going to be a huge demand for it later and people might even be willing to spend, you know, double the amount, triple the amount, whatever amount on the resale market, that's an investment. Um, okay. And then the next one, number eight, I, we kind of like fast forwarded to this a little bit, but I said, invest in your brain. I wrote down Bill Gates reads 50 books a year. Guys, it's only like 51 weeks in a year, right? There's 52 weeks in a year and he's reading 50 books. That's one book a month, a, a week. Mark Zuckerberg reads at least one book every two weeks. Elon Musk grew up reading two books a day. Billionaires are not know-it-alls, and they know that they can learn something from every single person that they meet. So invest in your brain. I love this tip because as shallow as it is, we were talking about investing in your beauty, investing in your outer appearance, um, investing in the gym, investing in looking good. I think that it's just as important to invest in your brain. Rich people don't want to be friends with dumb people. <laughs> I feel like you become like the three people that you surround yourself with the most. So it's obvious that rich people want to be friends with other smart, rich people. Which leads me to my next tip, which is invest in your friends. Again, you become like the three people that you hang around the most. So are you learning from your friends? Are you growing from your friends? Um, because most millionaires are. And if you're not, then you're kind of behind. A lot of the times it's not about what you know. A lot of the times it's who you know. So DM something that you want to DM someone that you want to be friends with. I used to be so shy about it. And like one of my goals this year for 2023 is to find a mentor because I also feel like investing in a good mentor like investing your time into a, finding a good mentor is really important having someone to kind of guide you and like someone that you can ask for advice i think is really important so 
DM someone, like DM someone that you look up to. I think I saw a quote and it was like, if you're working for someone that you don't eventually want to be, don't work for them. So DM someone that you want to be like, DM the person that whose job that you want to have, DM someone that, you know, they have something that you want, become friends with them, ask them how they got it, learn from them, grow from them. But I think also being able to like, offer something as well because I feel like when people get DMs being like hey can you be my mentor blah 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 blah. it's kind of like you know they don't really get anything out of it so I think having something like oh having something that they can kind of benefit off of whether it's like a collaboration or like you know you paying for lunch or you paying for coffee or you dropping by their place making it easy for them to be able to mentor you i think is the best idea and you can kind of get creative with it um but investing in your friend group and investing in making sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that are successful because i think there's also this quote and sorry i watched so many youtube videos i keep saying that um where this person was like i can tell you where you're gonna be in five years if you just tell me who your friends are if your friends are lazy if they're on the couch if they're watching netflix all the time they don't care about their future they don't care about their career they're um couch surfing they're not doing anything with their life they're sad they're depressed they're bleep blah, 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 blah. um where do you think you're gonna be in your life and if you surround yourself with successful people, if you surround yourself with people who are motivated, people who have connections, people who can give you advice, people who you can learn from, blah, 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 blah. Where do you think you're going to be in five years? Your friends and your inner circle can affect your life so much. And that's why I feel like I've gotten really picky with the people that I surround myself with. I literally feel like I have like two friends. <laughs> um like maybe four. I maybe have like four or five friends, but I'm really picky with the people that I give my time to because the most valuable thing that you could give anybody is not money. It's not anything uh, that you can touch. It's just your time. Because at the end of the day, you can't buy more time. You can't, you know, get more time. We all have a certain amount of time that we could give. So giving your time is the most valuable thing that you could give anybody and that even means that dusty crusty man that you found on hinge and he's doing nothing with his life if you're going on a date with him you're giving your most valuable thing that you could give to him your time be picky with the people that you hang out with that you hook up with that <laughs> you date that you surround yourself with that you spend time with because these people will shape you into the person that you eventually will be and adding on to tip number eight which is invest in your brain i also want to add that we are in the time of our lives where if you want to know anything in the whole world you just have google and the tip of your fucking fingertips and your fucking phone that you're listening to this right now it's so crazy because i'll talk to my friends like obviously you guys know i went to makeup school right <laughs> i went to makeup college i have a degree in makeup and hair and skincare um and i feel like a lot of the things as much as i loved going to school and it was such a great experience and it was amazing and i totally recommend it you could learn almost almost 90 percent of everything that i learned online and even my friends that are in dentist college they really need to be a dentist um there's they say the same thing my friends that are uh, trying to be optometrists they said the same thing almost everything that you can learn in college and school you can learn on the internet and there's no excuse for being dumb nowadays <laughs> you know i love a good makeup tutorial here and there just to like unwind and shit but spending the time like really listening to audiobooks really listening to dude there sometimes i don't know how legal this is but there's free audiobooks on youtube i don't know if that's legal but i listen to them and if you want to be good at something if you really want to invest in your brain invest in your knowledge invest in your business invest in anything you can learn almost anything on the internet for free and it's so crazy i feel like we don't even take advantage of it as much as we should like i feel like i waste so much of my time on fucking tiktok why the fuck do i spend so much time on tiktok but you can learn so much i'm trying to learn french right now and i'm watching like 
fun things like um french luxury unboxing videos and like girls are just speaking french and i don't really know what the fuck they're saying but i'm reading the captions and i'm kind of learning and picking it up and a lot of people say that they learn languages by watching different netflix shows or different um youtube videos where they're speaking the language um and you're kind of like reading the captions You can learn different languages for free. You can learn um, how to do makeup for free. You can learn how to put an Ikea desk up for free. You can learn countless amount of things for free. Whatever you want to learn, you can learn on the internet. I feel like we don't take advantage of it enough. So I don't know. what. One thing that helped me is I downloaded this app it's not even sponsored but it's called freedom and i think you have to pay for it right like like pay for it but it's basically like a vpn and it blocks you you can schedule time so i block like you know 9 a.m to like 12 p.m because i don't want to be on my phone like in the morning um because i feel like the morning time is like how you get your day started you get the ball rolling blah, blah 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 if i'm on my phone it's like all that i do all day so i have this vpn it's called freedom and i pay for it and it blocks tiktok instagram snapchat like all of the social medias that i get distracted by um and it's the best most life-changing thing <laughs> i don't block youtube because i feel like i learn a lot on youtube i don't i don't really like, procrastinate too much on youtube i feel like i learn but that has honestly really been helping me with stop like I don't know like again your most valuable thing that you can give someone is your time and I'm giving so much of my time to fucking TikTok girl (laughs) I could be learning a new language I could be doing this I could be doing that I don't know I'm kind of saying this because it's something that I'm working on and I'm struggling with like currently right now so I'm like saying it as if I'm like giving advice but I'm more so like giving advice to myself um (laughs) but yeah I hope that you guys enjoyed my little um, investing episode. I want to do another episode. It's called Things That I Wish I Knew When I Started Making Money. Because again, these are things that you can invest in. But there's also so many things that you need to know when you start making money, like getting a good lawyer um, and obviously investing your money like all of these things so i want to do another episode on that like a completely separate episode because i feel like i have so many tips i was such a dumb bitch but okay i have to give myself you know some i have to give myself some slack because i was like i started doing youtube when i was 13 years old and like i I started making money when i was like 18 like i have to give myself some slack i didn't grow up rich i didn't know nobody told me like i wasted so much fucking money but i'm so glad that i started learning and i started um watching videos on how to invest and like i started making friends that um grew up rich and they told me all these like life hacks they introduced me to lawyers they introduced me to contacts they told me how to save money on taxes like blah 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 blah. so i want to do a whole other episode on that um but yeah i hope you enjoyed my little episode on investing it's really just investing for beginners you can go on this whole deep dive of like all of the little shit that I touched on for like two minutes. You could go on a whole deep dive. I even um, really recommend the Netflix show Money Explained. That one was a really good one. Um, But yeah, moving on to the next segment of the podcast episode. It is What Would Rihanna Do? Lift me up, Rihanna, don't sue me. Um, I'm just saying this because I love you so much and I always ask myself, what would Rihanna do when I'm like in in a time of need? Um, so I asked you guys to ask me questions on my spam account. It's not Adeline on Instagram. Make sure you're following me on my spam account. Um, and you guys asked me some questions here. It goes, one person asked, because it's anonymous, I'm not going to say, one person asked how to keep your guard up, but still be open with communication. I've struggled with this and I feel like I still kind of do struggle with this with just trusting people and you know not always keeping your guard up and blah 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 blah. it's like definitely an attachment issue that I have um and something that I'm constantly working on and something that I definitely struggle with because I feel like I always have my guard up and I never trust people like one thing that I always used to say is trust isn't given it's earned and I don't know I feel like living like that is so scary and sad and like a scarcity mindset I feel like you know obviously there is you know moderation everything in moderation I think that you should trust people to a certain extent 
but I think that I was so extreme to the point where I didn't trust anybody and I closed myself off to so many good people and so many good relationships because I didn't know how to trust people and I didn't know how to let my guard down to genuinely nice people and like did I know that they were genuinely nice no could they have been like a completely awful person and like fucked up my life and like you know robbed me of everything that I have yeah but I just don't think that's a life to live of just constantly feeling like someone wants to take things from you. Someone's going to do you wrong. Someone's going to do this. Someone's going to do that. There's bad people out there, blah, blah, blah. I think that there's a difference between, you know, being street smart and like being able to read the room. But I think that there's also um, like freedom in your mind with just being able to trust people. And there was this one quote, I forget who it was by, but it said, if you if you let someone borrow or you loan someone $20 and they eventually end up ghosting you because they don't want to pay you back the $20, then the $20 was worth it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if if you're able to trust people and then the trust is proven wrong, then you giving out your trust at the end of the day is worth it because the person you realize has, you know, done you wrong. You've learned the lesson. You aren't having them in your life anymore and you're able to trust more people and you're able to open yourself to more opportunities and not live in this like, you know, scarcity mindset where you're like, oh, I can't trust anyone. Oh, blah, 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 blah. you know, I feel like there's so much freedom and there's so much more space in my mind with just being able to let loose and let go and while being smart being able to trust people and that goes with your career it goes with your friends it goes with your relationships um and it's something that i'm definitely still working on i'm not perfect at it (laughs) um but yeah i don't know it's something that i'm still kind of going through so i don't know if i can really give advice on it then i think this one's a really good uh question for today's episode They said advice on how to figure out what you want to do as your career. And I kind of talked about this on TikTok. I did like a get ready with me (laughs) on TikTok. So make sure you're following me on TikTok. It's Adeline Warren. Um, But I basically was saying how I, this is random, but it's going to eventually answer the question. But I want to live in Paris or London this year, or at least like live there for like a month or stay there for like a month because I'm 20 years old and I feel like I'm making vision boards with my friends tomorrow and it was kind of stressing me out I was like oh I don't know what I want to put on my vision board blah 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 blah. and I feel like what I normally would do is I would have like oh this is my career and my career is gonna pop off this year and I'm gonna be so amazing and life is gonna be so good and I have to do this deadline this deadline this deadline and my vision board is so intense and so crazy but what I started thinking is looking at my life as the bigger picture When I look at my life as a bigger picture, am I going to have my career completely figured out by the age of 20? Like, yeah, that's totally possible. But there's so many people that haven't even figured out their life until they were like 40 or 50. I brought up this business insider a little. (laughs) It's like a little article and it says 30 people who became highly successful after the age of 40 and some really cool examples this just like made me feel so much better about myself is stan lee he is the one that created marvel you know marvel like the whole marvel series he created his first hit comic the fantastic four just by the age of 39 Martha Stewart, you know her, how she's like the most iconic cookbook. She didn't make her first cookbook until the age of 41. Vera Wang, the iconic fashion designer, was a figure skater and a journalist before she even entered the fashion industry at the age of 40. But yeah, sometimes it feels like your life, I don't know, when you're 20 and when you're young, like I'm 24. Sometimes it feels like your life ends when you're 30. You're like, oh my God, I should have kids when I'm 30. I should be married when I'm 30. My whole life is going to end when I'm 30. That's how it feels like. But at the end of the day, like even, oh my God, I didn't even read this. Kris Jenner, the iconic momager, she didn't even become a momager until she was 52. That's when they started keeping up with the Kardashians. Like what was she even doing before then? That's, it makes me think like, like what if, my career like what if my career breakthrough I haven't even done it yet 
what if I figure out my career breakthrough when I'm 40? I don't know. I think I just put so much stress on myself in my 20s to, you know, figure out my career, figure out my life, have a partner, have babies, I get married. All like there's like a due date or something, but there's no due date. There's no finish line. There's no prize in finding out what your career is and like figuring it all out. There's even Ariana Grande did like this little speech. I'm just obsessed with this. That's why I bring it up. But she was like, this was honestly the most, you know, successful year of my career, but it was the worst year of my personal life. And she's like, I literally just won this award and this nomination. And I literally have no idea what the fuck I'm going to do with my life. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, it's crazy that people that successful, like Ariana Grande, like even she thinks like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Like, she's so young. Like, she's like us. She's like 20 years old. So I don't know, thinking about life kind of like in the grand scheme of things, as opposed to narrowing on just this year and, you know, creating my vision board this year. Um, it made me a lot less stressed out and it made me feel a lot more just like inner peace to just, you know, know that I don't have to figure it out this year and I don't have to figure it out next year and I don't have to figure out the year after. And coming back to the point of moving to London and Paris, I was like, okay, is, you know, moving to London or Paris, is that gonna, you know, make my career better? Like, no. Does it help my career? No. Like, will it, you know, ruin my career? Honestly, maybe. Um, But at the end of the day, like, when I look at my life and I'm like, you know, would I want to travel more when I'm 20? Like, when I'm 20, would I want to, like, just travel? And would I want to, like, live my life if I have that privilege of being able to travel and, like, work in different countries and, like, do what I want to do? hell yeah like of course I would want to do that in the grand scheme of my life of course I would want to travel in my 20s like that sounds fucking awesome and I don't know it just like made me so much less stressed out about how you know I'm making my vision board this year and putting the amount of pressure that I put on myself and I feel like a lot of us put on ourselves because society put so much pressure on your careers and you're only valid if you make a lot of money and you're only valid if you have your whole life figured out and you're only valid if you know you have a great career and like a good partner and some kids and blah 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 but you're valid no matter what and honestly the only thing that really truly makes you valid and makes you great and amazing as a human being is just being happy and if traveling makes you happy then fuck it and do it and if um you know working makes you happy then fucking do it and if you know getting married and having kids makes you happy then fucking do it like there's no deadline in life and I feel like in my head I was like oh I need to have kids by 30 I need to do this I need to do that but there's no deadline in life. And once I started wrapping my head around that, I just felt like all of this anxiety about my career and life just like wither away. (laughs) Okay. And the next question I have, um, what do you think about being in a serious relationship at a young age? Oh, this question so happy it's so cute it's so wholesome um because I feel like I definitely would have asked myself this if I was younger I'd be like what do you think about my relationship like I'm so young blah 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 blah. um I feel like I've had my worst heartbreaks when I was young and heartbreak is kind of like you know it's kind of like practice makes perfect and I you know I feel like the first relationship that I ever had when we broke up, I genuinely thought that it was the end of the world. I thought that my world was like ruined and I didn't know what I was doing with my life. And I had my life fully figured out because I wanted to have get married to this person. I wanted to have kids with this person and I wanted to grow up and grow old with this person. I felt like I had my whole life figured out. And then when we broke up, it was so hard for me and we met when we were so young we met when we were like 16 it was so cute and I was like oh my god we're gonna be like high school sweethearts we're gonna last forever and blah 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 and that first heartbreak was so fucking hard it's gonna be so hard your first heartbreak and I don't mean to scare you but the reason why I say that is because 
after your second heartbreak and after your third heartbreak and after your fourth heartbreak, it gets easier and easier and easier. And the more that you get through it, the more that you realize I'm going to be okay. Like I, when I broke up for the first time and I was heartbroken and I thought that my world was ending, um, <laughs> I took it really hard and I really took it to heart. And something that I wish that I knew when I was that young is you have so much time to figure it out. Again, it like brings us back to like the other question, but you have so much time to figure it out. You're so young. You have so much growing up to do within yourself, within other relationships. And you're not a slut if you slept with more than one person in your whole life. Like it's completely normal to sleep with multiple people. I don't know. I thought that I was a slut because I was like, oh my God, like I didn't want to have sex until I was married. And then I had sex with my first boyfriend. I thought I was going to marry him. And now I'm going to have sex with multiple people. I'm a slut. I'm a whore. Ah. But no, you're not a slut, girl. Like it's normal. We go through it. And like the, the first heartbreak is going to hurt so much. But you know, the more that you do it, the better it'll get. And it really does suck. And time heals everything. You may think that it's going to be the end of the world and it feels like the end of the world and it feels like nothing's going right in your life and nothing will ever go right in your life. But time, I promise you, heals everything. Just focus on yourself. I did my whole breakup series. Like you should just watch my breakup series on my main channel. Honestly, it was really healing to make that. But what do I think about being in a serious relationship at a young age? You should do it. Just fucking do it because I don't regret any person that I've had a relationship with. I don't regret any person that I've slept with because you know what? I've learned something from every single person and every single person that I've been in a relationship with, every single person that I've you know had romantic encounters with, it helps me form and mold the perfect person that I I want to be with like I know that I want to be with someone that's funny that has you know like a good stable job I want someone that has a provider mindset I want someone that you know is can take care of me and just makes me feel like home and I want someone that you know checks off all of these boxes that I like kind of like made in my little notes app or made in my little head um and I feel like you know, when I first started dating when I was so young, it's like falling in love for the first time. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. It's just such a beautiful thing. Like falling in love for the first time is so beautiful. I feel like I'm so emotional on my podcast. I don't cry this much. Like genuinely, I cry so much on my podcast. I don't know why I like trigger myself. I think I just talk about these really sensitive topics. But falling in love for the first time is so beautiful because you know, when you fall in love for the first time, you kind of just fall and you're not like scared of falling. You just fall in love and it's such a beautiful thing. And then, you know, you get heartbroken and you realize how shitty it is to have your heart broken. And you realize how, you know, someone can be like your whole world one day and then they could just not the next. And, you know, it can like cause you to put your guards up and this is like also something that I'm working on but you know eventually you're gonna have to keep your you know put have your guards down and like I don't know I just feel like just fucking do it <laughs> I think that's the that's my answer to your question the short answer to your my, to your question just fucking do it I love like young love is like the most cute, like beautiful thing. And just fall in love. Like don't think about it too much. Just do it. Like just live in the moment. Um, and you know, you might fuck up, but the best way to learn is by fucking up. And the best way to grow is by fucking up and being stupid when you're young and falling in love when you're young and, you know, getting heartbroken when you're young. Um, so don't hold yourself back. But what do you think about a serious relationship when you're young? Just fucking do it it's so beautiful and it's so amazing and if you have the privilege and you are able to like just fucking do it because it's so beautiful and it's so amazing and you're gonna look back on it one day and just you know feel really blissful about it and feel really like you know I don't know <laughs> like you may not you know miss the person but 
it's really beautiful to look back and see you know how you've grown and like how you've grown from it and what it taught you and how it evolved you and like who you became today and who knows maybe like you know you'll fall in love when you're 16 and it's genuinely like the love of your life and you stay together forever like who fucking knows nobody fucking knows um I don't know I think I'm just emotional about it because I feel like for so long I've like always had my guard up with you know letting people into my life and you know being open to stuff like that um and being in relationships but I think I've just like you know come to the point in my life where I'm just like fuck it like I might as well be young and like fall in love and like break my heart a million times and like be stupid then live a life where I'm constantly closing myself off to you know beautiful things (laughs) what the fuck is wrong with me I'm crying so much Oh my god. God. This is an investing video. And I'm talking about love. I think that I need to wrap this up. (laughs) Oh my god. This is an investing video, girl. Adeline, pull yourself together. (laughs) I don't know. I think that there is something to be said about also just like investing in your love life. Like, am I really crazy? Am I really tying this in together with investing? But investing into your love life, like spending you know, time and really focusing on yourself and your relationship with yourself and relationship with people, investing your time, your most, you know, valuable thing that you could give to someone or anyone or, you know, anything, investing your time into your love life and investing your time into, you know, the love that you have for yourself and your relationship that you have for yourself. That is the number one most important thing that you can invest in. Um, because you know people always say like you know money doesn't buy happiness and like I think I agree with that to like a certain extent because like I didn't grow up with money and I know like the struggle of like you know not having money and money solves a lot of problems and like you know obviously money doesn't solve does money solve 100% of problems no does money solve some problems yes so I think it's a little bit naive of us to say that money doesn't you know, buy happiness, because I think to a certain extent, it can really just buy freedom and it can, you know, free up space in your brain and like, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit buy you happiness. But at the end of the day, can money 100% buy you happiness? No. So should we be smart with our money? Yes. Yes, we should keep learning about investing. But at the end of the day, we all know that money doesn't 100% buy happiness. And You should invest a lot of your time into, you know, having that good relationship with yourself and having good relationships with others. Um, I should have added this as number 10, but number 10, I guess we can add it right now. (laughs) Number 10 tip for investing. um, I would just put investing in a good therapist and investing in a good life coach um, because your mental health at the end of the day will be the best thing that you could ever invest your money in. People always say, oh, therapist is so expensive. Oh, your life coach is so expensive, blah, 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 blah. It is the best thing that I've ever spent my money on. More than houses, more than rental properties, more than, you know, this, this, this. Everything that I've ever touched on in this whole episode, the best money that I've ever spent is on my life coach and on my mental health and um, just making sure that I'm okay because at the end of the day, nothing really matters. Money is, you know, a figment of our imagination. It doesn't really exist. Um, Numbers don't exist. People, it's crazy how like, you know, I feel like I grew up with such limiting beliefs of money. And I used to think like, oh, like, you know, minimum wage, like $10 an hour, like that's like a good amount of money and like blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, you start figuring out your passions, you figure out your career. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm making like $10,000 a month I didn't even think that was even possible and then you like go to these crazy conventions with like billionaires and they're having a hundred million dollars a month and you're like is money even real like what the fuck is money and you grow up with all of these like limiting beliefs as a kid at least I did um and investing in a good therapist and investing in a good life coach and just like investing in your brain is the best way 
to not only improve your life, like your personal life, but also your money life. Because, you know, if you didn't grow up rich, you probably grew up with limiting beliefs of money and you have to unlearn that. One thing that I really do love is The Secret on Netflix. That was like my gateway drug into manifesting and getting the life that I wanted. So if you're an absolute beginner at manifesting, I totally recommend reading the book The Secret um, or watching The Secret on Netflix because it's like an hour long. It's super easy to um, watch. Um, but yeah, this is like such a crazy full circle episode. <laughs> Guys, I swear I'm an Aquarius. Like I'm not this emotional. I think I just like I when I go on this podcast, we just talk about a lot of like things that really mean a lot to me and things that I'm going through and things that I'm focusing on and um, just really personal things and I kind of love that I love talking to you guys about these things um and I hope that you like it too but I think I'm gonna log off um but I love you guys and stay tuned for next episode because I really want to talk about things that I wish I knew when I started making money and I if you like this episode I really hope that you love the next week's episode um but yeah I love you guys we love a little girl talk um I'm always here same place same time if you ever want to chat every Wednesday um make sure to rate my podcast it means the world if you're listening to this on Spotify you're listening to this on Apple Music YouTube whatever it is rate it give it a big old thumbs up subscribe I love you guys um and I guess I'll talk to you in the next episode love you i'll be here same place same time love you guys bye did you like that episode i really hope that you did um if you haven't already then make sure to watch last week's episode or the week after just click on the links whatever it is um and i hope that you guys enjoyed also be sure to subscribe because it helps me a lot um but i love you and i hope you have an amazing rest of your day bye Sipping on a wine